Tim Eastfield, UBS AG and GB Group Services against the Commissioner for Her Majesty's Revenue and Custom. Lord Reid will explain the judgment of the court. These appeals are concerned with schemes designed to avoid the payment of income tax on bankers' bonuses. The schemes are intended to take advantage of statutory provisions, under which, put shortly, the award of shares to employees is exempt from tax if the shares are subject to a condition making them liable to forfeiture if some contingency occurs. For example, a senior executive of a company might be awarded shares subject to a condition that the shares would be forfeited if performance targets were not met. In that event, no tax is payable on the award of the shares. Under the schemes, the banks decided to award discretionary bonuses to their employees, but rather than paying the bonuses to them directly, the banks instead used the amount of the bonuses to pay for redeemable shares in offshore companies set up for the purposes of the schemes. The shares were then awarded to the employees in place of the bonuses. Conditions were attached to the shares, making them subject to forfeiture if a contingency occurred, so as to qualify for the tax exemption. The appeals are test cases for a number of similar schemes. In the UBS case, the contingency was a specified rise in the FTSE 100 index within the next three weeks. The contingency was unlikely to occur and it was also hedged against so that even if it did occur, the employees would not lose out significantly. In the DB case, DB standing for Deutsche Bank, the contingency was uh, the employees being dismissed for misconduct or voluntarily resigning within the next six weeks. Once the exemptions had accrued, the shares were redeemable by the employees for cash. The central question in the appeals is whether the conditions attached to the shares fall within the scope of the statutory provision conferring the exemption. On a literal interpretation of the statute, they do. But the question is whether a literal interpretation reflects what Parliament intended. The first here tribunal held that Parliament could not have intended that the exemption should apply to arrangements contrived purely in order to obtain the exemption and having no other business or commercial purpose. That decision was overturned by the upper tribunal who considered that the schemes met the requirements of the legislation. The Court of Appeal agreed with the upper tribunal and noted that Parliament had dealt with tax avoidance elsewhere in the legislation, but had made no provision in respect of schemes of this kind. The revenue now appealed to the Supreme Court. Unanimously, the Supreme Court allows the appeal. The Court considers that tax statutes are generally concerned with real-world transactions with real-world economic effects. Where a transaction or an element of a transaction has no real-world purpose but is designed purely to avoid tax, it can usually be said that to allow the tax treatment to be governed by an element that has no real-world purpose of any kind is inconsistent with that fundamental characteristic. In the present cases, it is difficult to accept that Parliament can have intended to encourage by exemption from tax the award of shares to employees, where the award of the shares has no purpose whatsoever other than the obtaining of the exemption itself, a matter reflected in the fact that the shares are in a company which was brought into existence merely for the purposes of a scheme, undertakes no activities beyond its participation in the scheme, and is liquidated upon the termination of the scheme. The encouragement of such schemes unlike the encouragement of employee share ownership or share incentive schemes, would have no rational purpose. Furthermore, it's clear that one of the purposes of the legislation was to forestall tax avoidance, so it is hardly likely that Parliament intended it to apply to tax avoidance schemes. Those considerations outweigh the fact that Parliament did deal with certain kinds of tax avoidance 
elsewhere in the legislation. The court concludes that the provision conferring the exemption is therefore to be construed as being limited to conditions having a business or commercial purpose and as not applying to commercially irrelevant conditions whose only purpose is the obtaining of the exemption. It follows that income tax is payable on the bonuses based on the value of the shares awarded to the employees. The court is now adjourned. <laughs>